Hi there, this is Materials Lesson 5, and it's Stress, Graphs, and Energy Stored. So this is a wordy one, so just a lot of information, so you probably need to pause uh, and take notes on a regular basis. There's an example question at the end, like a bit of an exam style question. And then Lesson 6, which is next, is basically all questions that encompasses all the stuff that you've done in Materials. So let's start with this one. So stress strain curves, so metal wire, example steel, might look like this. So straight line up to P, P is the limit of proportionality. So up to this point, stress in this instance is directly proportional to strain. E will be the elastic limit, which is very close to P. Very close as in, in your exam, basically the same place. So beyond this point, the wire will become permanently stretched and suffer plastic deformation. Like this. Again, in the exam, the Y1 and Y2 can essentially be the same point. So you might get curves that look, I'll try my best to sketch this, look like this instead. Obviously, not off the graph, but, you know, that type of curve. Y1 and Y2 in this instance is, is simply exaggerated. You've got a yield point. So this is where the wire weakens temporarily. And then beyond the second yield point, a small increase in stress causes a large increase in strain as the wire undergoes plastic flow. So strain is obviously, uh, stress sorry, is force over area. So applying a little extra force causes large increases in strain, which is the extension over the original length. UTS is the ultimate tensile stress. Obviously, the word ultimate just means final. So beyond the maximum stress, the wire loses its strength, extends, becomes narrower at its weakest point, and then it will fracture. Again, this UTS and breaking point are exaggerated. So you could get a graph that looks like that instead. So what about a brittle material such as glass? A brittle material does not undergo plastic deformation. So there is no plastic flow region. And it will simply fracture at the elastic limit. So again, P and E have been exaggerated in this case. So that might be the stress strain, uh, stress strain curve for, for glass. So what about a ductile material, for example, copper? So a ductile material can be drawn into a wire. Obviously, we've got a lot of copper wiring all over. So it like this. Or like this. Depending on the type of material. So both steel and copper are ductile, but copper is even more ductile. Thus, it can withstand a greater strain than steel before breaking. Although it's not as strong or as stiff as steel. That can be seen from the amount of stress that can be applied before it breaks. So the UTS for copper is down here. And the UTS for steel, the you know the ultimate before it ultimate tensile stress before it'll break, vastly different in terms of stress. So copper is more ductile, more stretchy, so to speak. Right, elastic strain energy. So when a spring or wire is stretched, potential energy is stored. This form of potential energy is called elastic strain energy. So consider a spring of original length L undergoing an extension delta L due to a tensile force F. Force against extension. So the graph opposite shows how the force varies as the spring extends. So the work done and extending the spring is given by work done is force times distance. So the average tensile force times extension is simply the area under the graph. Half the force multiplied by the change in length or the extension. So like I said, the energy under the curve 
is equal to the energy that's stored within the spring. So the elastic strain energy is simply half F delta L. And of course we can write this equation as elastic strain energy is half Fe, E being extension. Completely up to you which version you use, personal preference. Typically I would use this one. Let's move on. So what about stretching something like rubber? So the work done in stretching rubber up to an extension delta L or extension E is equal to the area under the loading curve. So there's the loading curve. This is what it looks like for rubber. And then when you unload rubber, it comes back down like this. The unloading curve for rubber is different from the loading curve. When the rubber is unloaded, only the energy equal to the area under the loading curve is returned. So that leaves this area, the middle ground, the area between the two curves is the energy transferred to internal energy, due to which the rubber band becomes warmer. And you all know that, you've probably done this. If you get an elastic band and keep stretching it and unloading it and then loading it and unloading it and loading it, the you know the rubber material will, will just hold heat, its internal energy will increase. This is also, it's called a hysteresis curve. Now this used to explicitly be on many exam boards. It would explicitly say hysteresis, but it was, it's been taken off as of late. However, I have seen some examples of this hysteresis curve. And the exam board just anticipate that, you know, you should just be able to figure it out in the exam. But here it is. This is what stretching rubber looks like. Right, so what I want you to do is to complete these questions. So if you want to pause and have a go, and then I'll take you through the answers, and then we'll finish with a with an exam style question. So first one. 120 joules, half FE. Next one, be careful with the centimetres. So you get three joules. It's the third one. 100 millimetres, remember the kilonewtons, 3,000 newtons. And the last one, you've got micrometres, so 6 times 10 to the minus 6. And it wants an answer in meganewtons, so it would be 4 meganewtons. Hopefully that went okay. So before you do this one, question C, or 4 part C, you might need this equation. It's just from GCC. So energy stored in a spring is equal to half K E squared. K being the spring constant in newtons per meter, E being extension in meters. And then we've also got half force times extension and F equals K E. So you want to write those down, make sure you've got these. So this is GCC, this one's GCC as well. This is new at A level, the middle one. So if you want to pause and have a go at the question. A spring of original length 20 centimetres extends to 25 centimetres when a weight of 4 newtons is hung from it. So first of all, let's do A. Calculate the elastic strain energy stored in the spring. So let's do that, part A. So the elastic strain energy is half force times extension. So that's 0 0.5 times the force of 4 newtons, which is the weight, multiplied by the extension, and it extends from 20 to 25 centimetres, so that's 0 0.05 metres. If you calculate that, you should get 0 0.1 joules of energy. It's part B. Let's do the spring constant. So that's F equals K. And the spring constant is force over extension. So we've got a force of 4 newtons divided by an extension, 0 0.05 meters, which gives a spring constant of 80 newtons per meter. 
And then finally, we need the length of the spring when it's storing 0.5 joules of energy. So let's clear this. So for C, we need to use energy is a half Fe. Sorry, half Ke squared. And then rearrange to find the extension. So we've got two times the energy divided by k and then square root to give the extension. So two times the energy, two times 0 0.5 is one. So we've got one divided by 80 and then square root. So one over 80 square root will give us the extension, which is 0 0.11 meters. So that's the extension, but it wants the length of the spring. So we've got the original length, which is 20 centimeters or 0 0.2 meters, and then this 0 0.11. So the length of the spring when it's storing 0 0.5 joules of energy is simply the 0 0.2 plus the 0 0.11, which gives us 0 0.31 meters or 31 centimeters. Hope that went okay. Well done if you got that right. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.